Okay, welcome back for another tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to be in 3D Mill Lesson 13. Um, and actually, I have the wrong drawing up here. This is going to be 13 tutorial. Let me bring that up. Okay, oops. Let me bring that up in another one. Um, open with sketch. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is going to be the drawing for that. And we're going to create a solid for this one. So let's go ahead and begin by creating that solid. So I'm going to first draw this outside and then I'm going to draw the inside. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So it looks like we have a one. Well, actually, I'm going to draw these circles first. Okay. So I'm going to create these arcs. And I'm actually going to create this kind of centered on the zero zero and then I'll move it later on and the reason for that is because if you look at this it's a lot easier everything's centered so I can just do negatives and positives so if I divide this by two I can just do a negative and do it at zero uh, makes a lot more sense okay so we're gonna do a uh, looks like three and a quarter divided by two so I'm just gonna go negative click in here. Uh, so it's going to be a negative 1.5 is half of 3 plus an eighth that would be 1.625. So negative 1.625 comma 0 enter and it looks like we have a radius of 375 0.375 enter. Uh, and I'm going to lock that while I'm there. And then I'm just going to do a positive 1.625 comma 0 Oops. There we go. Check. Oops. Check. All right. So there is our circles. Uh, now we need to create some 45 degree angles from these. So I'm just going to lock this at 45. Um, and we're going to hit check. Actually, we're going to do this. Create that one, check. We're going to do a negative 45. Create that one. And check. And we're going to create 45 or 90 plus 45, which is going to be 135. And I'm going to hit my check. And we're going to do a negative 135. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to hit the check button. <clears throat> and it looks like, um, if I bring this over, it looks like we have to do a line across here at what's going to be 1.75 divided by 2. Uh, so that's going to be 7 eighths, I believe. So we're going to put, uh, I'm going to create actually a horizontal line for this. Uh, so I'm just going to do line horizontal at point eight seven five. <clears throat> Okay, and that doesn't seem quite right. There, let me take a look at that again. Let's see, horizontal, and we have 0.875, enter. Okay, so we're not getting the right. Let me see here. Let's do a, let's do a freedom, and let's do um, negative, 1.5 comma 0.875 there we go that's better and let's do a negative 1.5 comma negative 0.875 and just draw a straight line and then we'll trim this so as you can see um, you know sometimes I have to figure out exactly how I want to do this uh, my commands don't really work the way I want I try a different way uh, so there we go. We got that basic shape, and now I'm going to fill it these entities. And it looks like they're 0.375. Okay. 
Okay. And check. All right, so there is my first shape. And I'm going to hit check. Uh, looks like my second shape is a negative half inch. So I'm going to create that just by putting this at a negative 0.5. I can either do that or just translate it down after I make it. Um, I like to try and do this if I remember. If not, it's still no big deal. Um, okay, so let's do a rectangular shape. <clears throat> and let's do a center. Uh, let's do, well, base point's going to be 0, 0, 0. Okay, 0. This thing's freezing up on me here. There we go. Check that out. Comma zero. Okay. So our width appears to be 2.0 and our height appears to be 1.0. And what is our radius? Our fillet radius appears to be 0.25. And that looks pretty good. Um, I don't think my fillet radius is taking, though. Hmm. I probably just didn't do it yet. No, that doesn't look right. Let me delete that. Something's weird with this thing freezing. So this happens sometimes. I'm not sure why it, it reacts like this. Hmm. All right, you know what? Rather than doing that, I'm going to anchor to center, and I'm going to create a width of 2.0, tab 1.0, enter, check, and I'll just do my fillet, fillet chains. Uh, unselect that. Full chain, check, and we're doing 0.25. Okay. All right, so that gave you what I wanted. Um, I'm not sure that was acting funky. Something's up with my my license. I had trouble opening this earlier, so I think that's creating some problems. But um, anyway, oh, I'm gonna draw my negative 0.5. Yeah. So see, that didn't work either. So that, that should have definitely worked. Uh, so I'm not sure why uh, this thing's struggling so much, but that's okay. We can transform it down. We'll fight through it. Sometimes that's what you have to do. And we'll move that, check. All right, so there is our two profiles. So we're gonna do a loft. And uh, what I wanna show you here is I wanna show you what how the importance of picking the correct start place for your chains. So if I pick here for my top one, and maybe I pick here for my bottom one, um, it actually doesn't look too bad. I was kind of hoping that would look worse than it does. Let me undo that. Um, let me undo. And let me go to loft again. And let me do this one and this one. And hit check. Okay. Now there's a good example. So see how it's twisted? It almost looks like, um, you know, like kind of like a, a cloth. You know, there's cloth, like a mesh in between it that's twisted. Uh, that's what happens if you twist or you create your start points at different places, different orientations around the part. Um, yeah, so you can kind of see that. So it's important to make sure that you pick the correct starting places for your loft. Now, in, uh, in the book, it has you pick maybe like here and here and hit check. And that looks pretty good. Uh, it is not 100% that way. Uh, so whenever I create a loft and I want it to be consistent, and this is okay, but you can still see there's a little bit of a ripple kind of in here if you look at it close enough. Um, and you're never really going to totally get rid of that, but <clears throat> the best way to create an accurate loft is to split it to two consistent points. So I'm going to do here and here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my break command. And trim that to two pieces. And I'm going to create this one. And I'm going to trim that to two pieces as well. So what I did was basically bisect those lines. So now I have, you can see there, 
those points are exactly in line with each other. All right, so I'm going to come back into drafting. Oops, check that. Solids. In this case, I'm going to do solids. Well, let me do the surfaces first so you can see it and see how see if it looks a little better. Um, it might not look a lot better, but because um, it's pretty extreme. But uh, you can see there. You see how we don't have really have as much twisting there. I can't really see anything as far as twisting. That is a much better surface. Uh, it's even better than the way that they show you to do it. So uh, just keep that in mind. That's important that you have those two start points at the exact same spot. And that way your loft won't look like it's twisted around. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of there and we're gonna create a solid for this. So I just wanted to show you the surface and show you the difference there. Um, Cause it will happen in a solid as well. So we're gonna do a loft and we're gonna create this one, and this one, enter. All right, so there's our lofted solid. Uh, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit check, and I'm gonna create a different level for that, which I forgot to do. I'm gonna call it a loft, and let's move that to the loft level. Okay, let's create another one for um, block. And let's work on that one. And let's go top. And of course, I'm going to create a solid. And I can just do a block here, by the way. And we'll do a length of 4.625 tab width. Oh, check that. Yeah, length width of 2.5 and a height of 1.0. And that should be negative, actually. Negative 1.0. Tab. Okay. And there we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit check. Okay. So what we're going to do now that we have our solid is we're going to do a boolean. And it won't let you click move right away, which is kind of annoying. So the target body is going to be this. And our tool body, because what we're going to use to actually do the remove, is going to be that, that loft. So I'm going to click remove, and I'm going to select my tool body, which is that. And hit check, and there we go. Uh, I now have my boolean remove, and I have my lofted surface there. I'm going to hit check. Okay, turn that off, and now I have nothing but my solid. Uh, it looks like the next thing I need to do is put a quarter inch radius at the bottom of this. So I'm just going to select my uh, constant fillet here. And we're gonna actually just select this face. Check. And there we go. Uh, as you can see, put that radius on the bottom. Uh, that's a 0.1 radius. We actually want to make that 0.25. Uh, it looks a little better and hit check and there is our solid so since we're on this one I'm just going to call this solid now I'll rename it um, this one here I don't need doesn't have anything in it so I will delete that level uh, if I can figure out how to do it clear empty levels selected I always have trouble. Well, doesn't matter. I'll leave it there. Um, you can delete these. Now it's kind of uh, irritating me. Let me see here. Make active. Delete entities. Clear empty levels. All. Oh, I'm on it. That's why it wasn't working. Selected. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, if you have it checked, if you're working on it, it won't let you clear it. Um, sometimes I miss that when I'm trying to do it. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this. And let's transform this quick. So we're in our lower left hand or left or lower right hand corner here. So I'm going to transform this and we're just going to go looks like 4.625 which half of that is going to be 2.3125 x and then the y 2.5, half of that is going to be negative uh, 1.25. Uh, 
tab. Okay, we're gonna move it. Check. Select a song. Yes. Okay. So there we go. Uh, we are now going to delete that little point there. And let's uh, clear colors. And there we go. We are ready to do some tool paths. Okay, so let's um, let's go back to our levels and let's turn on this chain uh, or this this profile's geometry. And let's go to machine. Select our machine real quick. Do a three axis hot. <clears throat> and uh, we're gonna set up our stock and. Do a bounding box around that and selection. Okay, so that looks good. To check. Okay. Now we're gonna do an interesting path here. We're gonna do a um, a plunge pass, and this can be used sometimes to rough out material uh, for specific applications. Um, you don't use it very often, but it does, it, it puts all the cut pressure up through the spindle, which is not a bad thing, um, just provided that you step over the plunge and you don't, uh, you don't keep plunging the whole diameter. That's a little rough on the end mill. Uh, so there's some, some spots where you have maybe, uh, a good example of a place for this would be like something that was like a narrow, a narrow slot. This, this actually isn't a great part for the plunge. But um, a narrow slot or something like that would be a good place to do a plunge because you can use a larger diameter tool and you can just step over and keep plunging down to get rid of a lot of that material. Um, okay, so let's let's start with this. And I'm, what I'm going to do is pick a pocket first because uh, I need to define what I'm going to be uh, cutting here. I don't want that pocket. Sorry. Um, pockets... I actually want to do a regular pocket. Select this, check. And I'm going to go with a tool. Um, let's go with a, like a half inch end mill. Aluminum. And filter. Gonna get that off. None. Flat end mill. And let's pick a half inch flat. Um, I don't really care about the feed rate for this. This is just a guide path, uh, so you'll see here in a minute. Um, it, it does, some of these parameters do affect it. Um, what I care about really is the plunge rate. So I'm going to make that like 25.0, and we'll rapid retract there. Uh, cut parameters, all this stuff is good. We are going to leave some material on the walls. So I'm going to leave that at 0 0.05, and on the floors, 0 0.05. Roughing, uh, for this, I am going to do a parallel spiral. And my step over, we're gonna make the step over maybe 20%. So 0.1. Entry motion, we're gonna turn that off. Finish, we're gonna turn that off. Lead-ins off for that. Depth cuts, no. Linking parameters, uh, all this stuff is fine, zero. Depth is what we want, and I think everything there is good. Okay, so you can see there what we have. And now I'm going to go in and I'm gonna pick my plunge here. And I'm gonna pick my surfaces. Actually, you know what, let me try something here. No, let me get a plunge, reselect that, and uh, if you look up here, it's a shift and click to select tangent surface. So I should be able to get all these surfaces just by hitting shift and click. And there we go. Uh, so a real easy way of selecting. These here selections, don't ignore these. Um, these are awesome. Uh, sometimes, especially when you're working five axis, I love these things. The end selection, uh, that looks good. Um, I'm going to leave the containment off for now. Uh, half inch end mill is what we want. We want a feed rate of 25 inches a minute. Spindle speed, we're gonna make that 12,000 RPM. And rapid retract surface. Uh, everything there looks good. 
Stock to leave on drive. We're going to leave 0 0.05. Actually, we're going to leave 0 0.01 on there. I can actually get out, take that out of my other um, pocket pass. Okay, now it's asking here, uh, what tool path do I want to use? So max step down. Um, max step down is 0.25. I'm actually going to change that to 0.1. And step over, we're going to make that maybe point one as well. And it looks like CI and select that one. And check. Okay. So, not quite what we wanted there. So, I need to reevaluate that and take a look at what we've got. Let's go back to that zigzag and see what that gives us. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Okay. All right, NCI, select this again. Uh, minimum step over 100. Check. Think. So that helix is the problem. Um, that's new. I've never never seen that in there before. So it, it actually like does a plunge helix thing, which is really interesting. I kind of noticed it as I was looking at the side profile. Let's bring it back so you can kind of see it. Um, it automatically had that on, so I was kind of wondering what was going on there. So kind of see how it's like helixed down. Really interesting. Um, not really sure why you'd use that. But... Uh, these paths aren't actually cutting anything, but they're helixing down to do this part, which is the plunging. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm sure there's a use for it. Um, I just don't know what it is. So there is our tool path. Now that looks pretty good. So let's take a look. Uh, one thing I did want to do is I want to adjust this pocket. And I had 50,000 on here. I actually want to make this zero now because I put... Um, some offsets in our plunge. So that looks pretty good. All right, let's see what we got here. Play. It's going by. It's only taken 100 thou. That's why you saw that first pass. Didn't really take anything. Uh, and there we go. So that roughed most of it out just by stepping over and plunging it. And I could change those um, those paths as I saw fit. Like I could change the step over. Uh, I can change a bunch of different things in there. But um, for this, uh, this is fun. Uh, so if we move on here, I'm just kind of looking through. Uh, so we're going to use a finished contour for this. I'm just kind of seeing what they what they use in the book because I want to stay somewhat consistent. But you can you can finish this with a lot of different paths. So we're going to pick a finished contour, contour, and again, I'm going to use my shift click and selection. Uh, we hit check. Uh, I'm not going to select my containment, my containment yet. I may put that on if I need to. So I'm going to hit check. All right, we're going to use... Uh, I think we have, I'm trying to remember what radius, I think we have a quarter inch radius in the bottom corners of those. Yeah, we have a quarter inch radius at the bottom. So the biggest we could possibly use is a half inch. I want to use smaller than that. I always try to use a little bit, or a size smaller than what, um, than what my radius is. So none, ball end mill, uh, check. And let's use a 3 8 ball in which I think is what your book's using. Uh, we're going to move this thing at about 100 inches a minute. 
and oops, not 10, 100. And we're going to go 12,000 RPM plunge rate. We're going to make that about 30 inches a minute. And we're going to rapid retract. Okay, so surface, I'm going to leave my clearance off. No, nothing to leave. These are all just fine. Uh, finish contour, our maximum step down is 0.1. We're going to change this to like 0.01 because this is going to be our finish. So it's going to determine our finish and how big the scallop is. Um, I'm going to leave this on climb. I actually prefer high speed. Uh, I believe they use broken here. We're going to try high speed, see if we can get that to, to do what we want. Um, zigzag, we want to do one way. And let's hit check. I believe that's all I'm going to do for that. Okay. Uh, so you can see here, there is our pass. All right, so let's take a look and see what that looks like. Play. Play. Oop. So there is where that containment boundary comes into play. So let's get out of there. So that's what the containment boundary does. And that's kind of why I left it blank in the beginning. Uh, so let's select our containment. Check. Check. And let's regen that. And let's hit play. Let's see if that fixed the problem. That looks a little better. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, so I'm happy with that finish around there. Obviously, if I wanted to increase that or make it, or I should say, make it a little uh, smoother, um, I would just decrease that step down. Okay, last path. We are going to finish with a. Hmm. Where is it? Um, I don't see it in here. So we might have to click over here. So if we click over here and we go to... Mill tool paths. Surface finish. And there's our shallow. I couldn't find it up there for some reason. All right, so our finish surfaces are actually going to be here. Okay, and selection. And I need a containment, which is here. Check, check. And three to ten mil at a hundred inches a minute. Plunge rate is thirty point zero twelve thousand RPM. Surface is fine. Um, machining angle, we're good there for the moment. Um, tool containment, actually, we need to be inside. And I also want to make sure that my max step over is 0 0.01 because I'm going to match whatever I did for my step down. Um, cheating out of zero, that's fine. Everything there looks good. Let's hit check. Okay, so you'll notice there's probably a little bit of overlap, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I'd rather it be overlap than there be it, there actually like a gap between them. Um, what I mean is overlap between my uh, my first finish pass and my second finish pass. Whoa. Well, that's not quite doing what we want, we want to do, is it? Uh, so let's take a look at what we can do to change that. Um, it's compensating to the inside. So that should be okay. Um, let me actually get rid of those surfaces those radii. 
I think that's what our problem is. Trying to do those, but I don't think it's going to like those. And selection check. Regen. All right, let's try that again. See how that looks. Play. That looks a lot better. Um, not quite happy with these radii yet. So let's look and see if we can't clean those up a little bit. Let me, uh, one of the things we can do is we can go in here and where we're controlling our angle, let's increase that. Basically what that means, this from slope angle, basically it's gonna cut anything into zero. So anything that's flat uh, all the way up to 10 degrees. So what that's gonna do is allow me to walk up those angled surfaces, those radii up those angled surfaces, depending on what angle I put in there. I'm gonna try putting a 20 in there and see how that goes. Uh, we'll see if that, that helps anything. Uh, there's nothing on there I want. Um, also, the other thing that I want to do is I'm going to select all of my geometry here because I only had this selected here. Um, oops. Clear selection. So I'm going to just, uh, uh, I guess I triple click to get everything. Maybe not. No? Got it. All right. And selection, okay, so all of it's selected now. Um, actually, let me, let me see what difference it makes without doing this. 10, zero. check, okay, let's regen that. See if that actually cleans it up. I wanna kinda of look at the differences between you know each thing. If I do both of those adjustments at once, so that, that cleaned it up. So we did, it looks better. Uh, it's not digging in. But I can still see there's a, like a large scallop here. Uh, let me go to my stock and take that and put it on. Let's see if we can see it from the side here. Right side view. It don't look too bad, but you can see here, you kind of got, uh, you know, uh, you can tell where it doesn't blend, right? It doesn't blend right. You can see that. So let's change that. Let's go in and change this. And I think this will take care of it. If I make this a 20, um, might not, might need to make it more. But that should take care of the problem or at least make it better. That's better. I uh, just a little bit maybe. Um, and I can, I can increase that, you know, I could increase that to 25 or 30 degrees, uh, whatever I really needed to do. So let's, let's try and increase a little more and see if that makes a difference. So 30 degrees and regen that again and let's hit play. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. So I don't really see a clear point there where you know, it looks blended pretty good there. Um, if I look down at the part, oh yeah, that looks really good actually. Um, let me turn on solid. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. So there you go. Um, that is our finished path. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you obviously, as always, you can see me during class or of course you can see me during my office hours.